Now, the UN Special Representative for Libya, Gustav Salami, says the North African country is on the verge of descending into a civil war which could lead to the permanent division of the country. While addressing the Security Council in New York, the UN rep says there has already been too much death and destruction. The special rep adds that the conditions for migrants and refugees in Libya were already critical prior to the conflict, but these conditions have now gone from bad West. 48 days into the attack on Tripoli by General Haftar's forces, there has already been too much death and destruction. Libya is on the verge of descending into a civil war, which could lead to the permanent division of the country. The damage already done will take years to mend, and that's only if the war is ended now. Head of the United Nations support. Mr. President, I am no Cassandra, but the violence on the outskirts of Tripoli is just the start of a long and bloody war on the southern shores of the Mediterranean, imperiling the security of Libya's immediate neighbors and the wider Mediterranean region. The security vacuum created by the withdrawal of many of General Haftar's troops from the south coupled with the focus of the Western forces on the defense of the capital, is already being exploited by Daesh and by Al-Qaeda. There is a need to acknowledge that there is an unprecedented toxic external interferences in Libya. These interferences have flooded the country with weapons, which has created a conducive environment for terrorist groups to thrive. These interferences are exacerbating the already volatile situation on the ground, in this regard, we call on all actors to work in the genuine interests of the Libyan people and respect the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Libya. Meanwhile, UN Chief Antonio Guterres says the best way to protect refugees and displaced people is to prevent them from having to leave their homes. At the opening of the Africa Dialogue series, Mr. Guterres also commended Africa's generosity towards people seeking safety from war and persecution. According to the UN, countries such as Uganda and Ethiopia have opened their doors in record numbers. However, an increasing number of forcibly displaced persons has become a burden on the continent's economy, the environment and the way of life of host communities. The best way to protect refugees and displaced people is to prevent them from having to leave their homes. That means tackling root causes, poverty, conflict, discrimination and exclusion of all kinds. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the African Union's Agenda 2063 are our roadmap. Both agendas are aligned around the people-centered and planet-sensitive transformation. Eradicating poverty is their overriding priority. Climate change jeopardizes all our plans for inclusive and sustainable development, and many African countries are particularly vulnerable despite contributing little to global warming. Rising sea levels, droughts, floods, the spread of tropical diseases, and the loss of biodiversity would be devastating. And climate change also multiplies other challenges, other threats, including poverty, conflict and particularly displacement and slows economic growth, reducing opportunities for inclusive, sustainable development in Africa and beyond. We need longer term approaches, education, lifelong learning, opportunities to make a living and contribute to society, including for women and girls. We need durable solutions, voluntary return or repatriation as appropriate, but also resettlement and integration. And we need greater political and financial support from trans for transitions at the humanitarian development nexus.